Let's get wet. LMP2. Is a race at 115? Alright, we'll try it. I've done no running. No practice, but I've not even tried the wet yet. But let's just do a little bit of running and then go straight into a wet race. I've only heard good things though about this wet. Apparently it's very realistic. The wet line is quicker, which isn't a thing in sim racing, so hopefully this is as good as everyone says it is. My real life racing experience in the rain, I have done a couple of Formula Ford test days in the wet. In the McLaren GT3, I did a few test days. I did a whole race weekend at Snetterton in the wet. Done some running at Silverstone in the wet. Done some running at Brands Hatch in the wet. That's pretty much it, really. What's the weather saying here? So it's overcast. Track is moderately wet. Listen, right? I can read all this, this all I want. Let's just do some laps. Right, I racing in the wet, let's go. Feels light. Actually, it doesn't really feel that bad. I thought I was going to have less grip than this. Oh, I can feel puddles. Yeah, first, this is literally my first lap in the rain. I mean, I don't know if you guys are seeing what I'm seeing, but the graphics look pretty flipping good. Like, I've got them turned up, don't get me wrong. But it looks kind of cool, with the puddles and stuff. It's, it's realistic in the sense that in the wet, you feel like you've broke too late or you're out of control, and then it re-grips at the very last minute when you're offline, when you're off like the conventional racing line. So that side of it does feel quite good, actually. So I'm out of grip here, but then it grips up again. Big puddle. Oh, the. Well, I think it's actually good and realistic, but it's just weird feeling like the lack of grip in a sim on the conventional racing line. Because even in ACC or R Factor, when it rains, the dry line's always the quickest. But this, I don't think that's the case in this. Look at that on the curb with all the paint. No grip at all. See, what is that? Is that? That's not me locking up. It just aquaplanes a bit, even though I'm not in a puddle. Well, it feels more unpredictable than ACC, which in real life is how it feels as you're coming over and off the conventional racing line. It's, it feel in real life it feels so unpredictable, and I get the same feeling in this. Whereas in ACC, the conventional racing line is still always the quickest, no matter what corner you're in. Yeah, from the videos I've seen, the spray is crazy. But I, I guess that is how it is in real life, and I can I can vouch for that. I did a race start in the wet at Snetterton GT3, starting in the mid-pack, and I could not see... I did a video about it, actually, but I could not see a thing. So that is realistic. Oh! So usually you'd be using the track on the outside there, but there was no grip when we did that in the rain. Stay off that puddle. Again, stay off the puddles. Maybe using a wet line here might be quicker. Oh! 
Oh, yeah, this feels good, you know. This does feel good. This feels fucking good, man. I can't see, though. Oh, my God. Oh, right, mate. Where are you going? That is really fucking, that is insane, that spray. I like it though, it's how it is. Pushing a car like a hypercar. Big fat rain tires dispersing all that water. That's how, that's how it is. Oh, now look, a bit too hot. I mean, that is the quickest way to go through there though, you know. Going, oh, from my experience anyway, going really hot to these corners, almost out of control. Wait for the car to grip up, and then... So you can see the car, like, skating around when I'm on the line, but as soon as I go offline, it did just settle down a bit and it had a bit more grip. I think this is going to be, especially for endurance races, so enjoyable. Having to adapt your driving every single lap. That is what racing's all about. Not this hot lap shit where you have the same grip and the same line, the same breaking point every lap. Like, the, having to adapt every lap is how it should be. So this is, this is cool. So much to get involved with here and there. Our prep for the Sebring 12 hour has just exponentially increased with all this shit. But in a good way. It's, uh, this, this sort of, to me anyway, this sort of stuff's enjoyable, you know? But it's probably going to rain then. Good thing is it's unranked, so we do not have to worry about our I rating grind. Right, we'll do this race, and then we'll look at this one. GT3. At the new track, Algarve. Oh no! Bon Bonnet's here. 8.3k now. Lads, this is um, this is going to be a rude awakening, I think, because there's some quick boys in it, and they've probably done some laps. Right, let's, tr let's see what we can learn. Some rank, it doesn't really matter. Let's go. Oh my god. Someone spun. Oh my lord. Can't see. Spin, he had a spin. Wet lines all the way. Please don't turn in. Oh my god. Mate, this is nuts. Oh! Jesus Christ. That was a noise I didn't think I could make, to be fair. But. A bit deep. Wait, this is. This takes a lot of concentration. Please excuse the really weird facial expressions, but it's really weird driving and then not being able to see anything. Bono's behind me now. Oh. Might get slow down for that.
fight. Let's have some fun. I can say, let's have some fun behind Bono, but that sounds really wrong. So I'm not going to say that. I think it makes overtaking quite difficult, though, because even if you are quicker than the guy ahead, as soon as you get near him... Let's really lean on the car a bit more. There we go. Spin. That's going to hit me. Right, we're staying with Bono, which is good. That is crazy, mate. That's not good. Ooh. Interesting, I thought I was going to completely lose the car there and go into the barrier, but it did re-grip up quite nicely, actually. I feel like we're on a different setup to some people. But look at this, this guy's on a P2 and look at his straight line speed. They must be on like a wet Le Mans default or something. And then in the corners we are quicker. See look, you should just pull away from here. Now I'm using a I'm using my dry race setup, I use a Silverstone with some wet tyres on it, so probably not um, the best move for me. Behind's gonna flip and overtake us again. Please, no. Can't see a thing.
How was that an off track? We had a good gap then as well. This guy must be sick of me. I really can't see a thing. What the? This is the final lap as well. Wow, what a race this has been. I mean, Jesus. It's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. Interesting, I lose. Yeah, maybe I could be a bit more strategic with the way I give away penalties, but... Oh, my God! Yeah, I've not really practised that on iRacing, to be fair, how to relieve a penalty in the best way possible. So that is a good point. That is a good point. I'll work on that. Look at him pull away. Oh. Keep locking up. As the tyres wear, I think it's easier to lock up the tyres. Have to bring the braking markers back a bit. Yeah, it's full wet lines. Really enjoyable to drive. Really, um, they're a lot stricter on the off tracks than the wet. Same as ACC, actually. When it rains, the track limit system is a lot more strict. Probably be an off track, yeah. Interesting. It's actually as good as everyone says it is. Holy smoke. Endurance races are going to be unbelievable with this rain. Well, I've actually never driven this car on, on iRacing, so... Yeah, the new track, Portimao. them out. Are we on, are we on dries? So if I remember correctly in real life, even in the rain, I was fully into the ABS. Just letting the ABS deal with all the locking up for you. Still have to be quite aggressive in the GT3 in the wet. Oh. 
I'm going to just double check that I am on wets. Feels really low grip. Yeah. I guess we just have come from a LMP2, so it's going to feel extra. Oh, there we go. That's the eye racing grip grip loss I was expecting. Okay, this is a real uh, handful, this. No grip on this bit either. I feel like the gravel would slow you down more than that, though. Okay, let's try and drive super sensitively until we get some tyre temp, and hopefully it's a bit more easy to drive than this. At the minute, this is very, very hard. Gabriel, good to see you too. Mate, this is, it's like driving on ice. One eternity later. He sent that message at exactly the wrong time, didn't he? As I spin out into the gravel. Hope you're enjoying this. The approach I always had in the wet, in real life, was... Try the dry line. It, it, so the dry line geometrically is the quicker, quicker line. So try it in every corner. And you'll soon know if it's the wrong line to use in the wet or not. And if, it, if you can get away with it, use the dry line. But if you can't, use the wet line. So Red Bull one pole, Red Bull in third, and then it's me and Merck in second. I'll tell you what, I, the one rain experience I did, I forgot to mention, was Donington, my first ever wet race. It was a drying track, start of the race. They put me on wet and half the grid pretty much went on dries and I was up against the pros. Uh, on the first lap, I overtook like four pros, and I was like, holy shit, I'm it and center. But I didn't realize half the pros were on slicks, which on the first couple of laps really benefited me. But then as the tires got up to 10, I was, uh, I felt like a stone through the order. So, uh, yeah, that was probably the most wild wet experience I had in a race car. No tire temp. It's going straight. Clearly this guy's got some pace because he was fairly, fairly quick in quality. So let's see what he's doing. So hard to see. Oh dear. Hmm. 
one wheel on the white line, and yeah, you are basically dead. Okay. Don't know if the track's getting quicker, or if I am, but you just did a 2017 there, so we're, we're both getting quicker there. I think it's the track. Oh, big curb. This is, this is, this feels really good, really good. I know I'm not talking much, but I'm just enjoying myself. Fast this lap. Shame we couldn't do that for the the other laps of the race, the other eight laps, but we'll take that. Fastest lap. That is tricky, but driving in the wet in real life is tricky. But the same, I'm getting the same feelings in the ABS. I'm getting the same thing come up on the Delta from memory, because obviously it was four years ago since I drove a GT3 car in the wet, but the same things on here to go faster seem to be the same in the real car. Like on ACC, you just stick to the dry line, take up a bit of speed, drive less aggressive, and yeah, that's how you go quick in the wet. Whereas this, I'm having to go into deep, go into hairpins really deep, pivot really quickly, get a really straight exit, don't engage the TC too much. Uh, I'm having to balance through these sort of corners, the level of grip with the steering and the pedals be really smooth with my inputs. Here I have to wait and wait until I've got the grip and the car straight enough to squirt off the corner. So it's realistic, man. It's really, really good. I'm su I'm surprised. I didn't think it'd be this good. I really didn't think it'd be this good. Here a dry line's quicker because it's such an open corner. I think if you broke on the right, you'd be so slow through the corner. Whereas here, you could probably go a little bit more to the left, but you don't want to go too much more because if you get your wheels and it's, it's good it simulates this. If you get your wheels on the white line, you'll just lose all control. Uh, here, could probably use more curb. That curb's not really gonna affect grip levels too much. because we're only going over it for a short period of time. Here, it's all about keeping the car straight, not engaging TC. See here, I'm letting off the throttle, making sure the line's good. Just under driving the car a bit. Here, you see the rear wanted to come round there. 
but we kept it. See, you can see that I go on the dry line and you can see the car just wants to slide off it. But because it's a shorter line, it's still quicker, I think, than going or using a wet line around there. But it's exactly like real life. Here again, you could break on the left, but I think overall you're better off. In real life, this was a big thing for me is I, I assumed because the wet line was quicker, I, for all the hairpins and stuff, I was breaking offline, coming out wide and then getting a good exit. Because in my head, that was the best way to do it. But as soon as I got told by someone who was quick, uh, break on the conventional dry line, break a bit early, fully into the ABS, and just let the car stop, just let the ABS do its job, go really deep into the hairpin, get it stopped, rotate it really quickly, and then get a straight exit. That, that, that was the quickest way you said to go through hairpins in the wet in a GT car. So, like that. Could probably even brake later, turn it quicker, get on the power earlier, but you get the idea. I think these sections are quite tricky. It's just about keeping it nice and tidy, not getting the rear out. Again, the rear wanted to come. I think the brake bias might be too far rearwards on this setup. So I kept on having moments on the braking where the rear wanted to come around. Although in the wet, you do want the brake bias fairly rearward so you don't engage the front ABS too much. Here, it's all about a good exit. Same here, brake nice and early, get it under control, use the downshift to slow it down because the brakes are kind of useless in the wet. You'll use the engine braking a bit more in the wet. Probably went a bit too deep here because I can never get my braking point right for that. I think here, because the conventional dry line is there, it probably stops there. So I probably want to be, my left hand wheels want to be here, but I go way too wide. So I'm just losing time at that point. I get a good exit, but I probably lost so much on the entry. It's, yeah. Here, it's not too bad, Ving it off, turning in early, let it wash out, let it turn, get on the power. And then here, we tried the dry line through here, but it was too slippy and I just aquaplane wide. That's not ideal, but that's definitely not ideal, going on the curb. It depends how wet it is, if there's puddles or not. If there's no puddles, then I think dry braking zones are the way to go on a quality lap. Or just for general pace, definitely. Because it's still quicker. It doesn't feel as in control and, and nice. But I think overall, it's still quicker. Because the line is just so much better for lap time. But every track's different. Every corner's different. Every car's different. It's, it's very specific to what you're driving. So, yeah. Right. Oh, that, that's, that's the end of the stream, then, isn't it? But if I'm going to sum it up, iRacing Rain is phenomenal it is as good as everyone says it is it's realistic it's fun it's tricky it's hard but yeah i think it's a bit of a game changer to be honest i think it's a very good tool as well for drivers racing drivers wanting to crack this wet for an upcoming race weekend for example before I don't, there wasn't really the wet physics to do that whereas now i, I think this is very useful so yeah Big thumbs up, well done iRacing, they nailed it. <laughs>